Thanks once again for dropping by the channel. If you like the content, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe, share the video if you enjoyed it, if you felt it was useful. Now let's get into this. So, Jamal Charlo defeats Sir Guy Derevichen, go 12 round unanimous decision. Now I didn't watch the fight live. I watched, got up early this morning, just about to go to the gym now. And I watched the fight. I watched you know, a couple of the fights on the card this morning. And Jamal Charlo versus Derevichenko. Now I didn't do a prediction video. I recorded one, but I wasn't happy with the video that i done so i just said right i'll i'll redo it but i never got a chance to i did allude to it on one of my live streams that i was picking jamal charlotte to win i was picking him to win this fight on points now i thought this fight might be somewhat controversial because i know that the refuchenko is a very very good fighter i know he's very skilled i know that he is definitely the best opponent that charlo has faced and he's definitely going to be the toughest opponent that charlo has faced and as such in the fight that was the case now I saw the scorecards before I saw the fight, and they were wide. They were quite wide. The narrowest scorecard was an 8-4, uh, 116-112 scorecard. There was no one complaining about this fight that I could see, so I was thinking, okay, this was probably this was a legit win for Charlo. Let's have a watch of this fight. And the first three rounds, Charlo was doing some work. He was out boxing. Sergei Derevichenko, he was doing very well. His jab looked on point. He buzzed Derevichenko with a right hand. Derevichenko, one thing that i didn't take into consideration was how small he is at the weight not just in terms of his physical size because he's only about five nine which is quite small for a middleweight but even in terms of his body size this really is a 154 pound fighter when charlo and revichenko were stood together before the weigh in you could see just every bit of charlo looked bigger you know his neck everything just looked bigger and lest we forget charlo was the one who's come up in weight now he's been fighting middleweight for three years now so he probably has probably fully grown into the weight now at this stage but i couldn't get over the size difference in two guys you know charlo looked way bigger and after the first three rounds i was thinking damn is charlo going to win this fight just comfortably you know because he was he was doing some work those first three rounds very impressive from jamal charlo or jamal charlo and revichenko came back you know he really this was a great fight by the way if you haven't seen this fight go and watch it it was a great fight both guys gave as good as they got charlo was really in he was in the fight of his life. Like it was tough, but if anyone deserved to win at the end of this, it was Charlo. Like I had no issue with Charlo winning the fight. I would I had it 116-112 as well. Now, I did have it closer than two of the other judges had it. I gave Derevchenko some rounds in there. But for me, no one can argue that Charlo won this fight. Yeah, you know, that 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 he won this fight. You know. He showed something in his game that's underrated. Now I've always noticed this about Charlo, but I don't think a lot of people do. A lot of people just think he's more an outside fighter. He was fighting Derevichenko on the inside. And one thing I've always said about Charlo is don't underestimate his uppercuts. Right? His inside game is underrated. His uppercuts are very, very powerful. They're very good. They're very fast. And if you let Jamal Charlo in, or Jamal, yeah, Jamal Charlo, I always get them mixed up. If you let Jamal Charlo in on the inside and he starts landing those uppercuts, you're going to have problems. Now, his punch and power at middleweight, I have questioned it a little bit because he has been fighting some smaller guys. Um, you know, Derevichenko, smaller guy, Dennis Hogan's last opponent was a 154 pounder so that question is punching power a little bit at middleweight and i i think he's he's definitely not better fisted at middleweight but i think in terms of power punchers and stuff like that he's not one of the biggest having said that charlo is very skilled he's a very good fighter he showed that he could take some decent shots because the revichenko was landing some good shots on charlo no he was landing good shots. i think it was in the seventh round the Revichenko landed some good... Now, that round, I think they were both kind of buzzed a bit because Charles landed, I believe, it was an uppercut in that round and, again, it put Revichenko on his back foot. Could have been seven, could have been different, I'm not sure. But um, it was definitely good work from Revichenko that he was doing in there. He was giving Charlo a tough time. He was winning rounds in there, but Charlo was staying, you know, staying calm, working everything, keeping it on the outside when he could. Now, when he had to go inside, he was going on the inside. Revichenko was doing what he does. It was fan It was just fantastic. You know, if you haven't watched it, go and watch it. I say on this channel, right, there are fighters who I might not like in terms of people outside the ring. And I wouldn't have the most amount of time for either Charlo outside the ring. But inside the ring, I like watching them fight. And I got to give them credit where credit's due. You know, I'm just, that's me. I, I don't just, you know, knock a fighter if I don't like them or anything like that. Hell no. If they, if they do something that, does, they, that they deserve credit, I'll give them credit. Charlo boxed very well in this fight. Passed a lot. He ticked a lot of boxes. You know, because he was a good fighter at 154, right? He was probably, if he was still around there, 
at 154, he'd be undisputed. If he took his brother out of the equation, he'd be undisputed, no questions asked. And this is another thing. A lot of people have always said that they find that Jamel is the better of the two Charlos, right? I actually disagree with that statement. I think Jamal is the better of the two. The only reason a lot of people, in my opinion, think that Jamel is better is because he's improved more than Jamal Charlo. And what I mean by that is, is that Jamal was always looking quite good. He always looked good. Even at 154 pounds, he always looked quite good and then he moved up in weight where the guys are a bit bigger. Whereas Jamel, Jamel looked rocky early on in his career. You know, he had very close fights against Marderosian. He had that tough fight against John Jackson that he won. So he was always looking a bit, you know, a bit, I don't want to say vulnerable because his chin I don't think is that bad, but just in terms of his skill set. Then he turned around, then he started, you know, boxing a bit more on the back foot. He started, you know, fighting guys who come to him. He started sitting down the shots more and he looked a lot more explosive. So since then, he's looked a lot better. So I think in terms of who I think is the better fighter, I think Jamal is the better fighter, but Jamel is the more improved, if that makes sense. So when a lot of people say that they think Jamel is better, I say, no, no, I think Jamal is, but Jamel's just improved more. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this fight. Like I said, great fight. Um, I really enjoyed it. Staying up till whatever time of the morning. At this stage now, it's just not... Well, I can do it, but I only do it occasionally. So I didn't do it for this, but we'll get there eventually. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, of course, if you are new. Thanks again for dropping by as well. Um, really appreciate it. Smash the like button. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you. Peace.